Feedback is one of those really, really tricky things for software engineers. There's feedback that you give in pull requests on GitHub. There's performance reviews. You might be writing a promotion doc for somebody. It's all over the place in the industry, and it's a really important part of the job, not only because you're working with these people, you're helping them get their job done, but it also reflects on you and how you are doing your job and enabling people as a leader. And there's just all kinds of advice on the internet about giving and receiving feedback, good models to use. But for software engineers, I think there are some specific nuances that make it a little tricky. So in this video, I wanna give you my seven tips for how to give and receive good feedback for software engineers. Without further ado, let's jump in. If you like this kind of content and you wanna support the work that I'm doing, go ahead, like, comment, subscribe, all the things it really helps out the channel. So first, a little bit of background and where I picked up a bunch of these tips. For years, I've been in the industry working at Fang and different places, big companies, small companies. But one of the first places I worked at was Pivotal, a software company where we had the Cloud Foundry product, but also did a lot of consultancy and went into startups and other companies and showed them the ways that we worked, which were granted very extreme. We were doing a lot of pair programming, a lot of iterative feedback, and doing very tight knit sort of work where I was working directly with people all the time. It was very rare that I worked by myself on something. It more often than not was doing some pair programming or even in a bigger group. So giving and receiving feedback was critical to that job. And that's really where I picked up a lot of this. The company values reflected that and were very simple in a lot of regards, but you could go really deep into them. They were be kind, do what works and do the right thing. And really my advice here centers around those three tenants, be kind, do what works and do the right thing. So let's dive into tip number one. If you are attacking somebody directly, attacking their personality, attacking who they are outside of what their work represents, then there's a problem there. Let's look at a quick example of some bad feedback in this regard. John's communication skills are just terrible, and it really brings the whole team down. Whenever he's in a room trying to present something, it really just brings a cloud over the whole team, and we just can't get our work done. I just really question him being on the team. Several direct attacks were made there, several unempathetic statements. It was just not kind overall. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think that you should mistake this for passiveness. I'm not encouraging you to ignore specificness or ignore constructive feedback. So let's look at that again, but with a little bit of empathy, kindness, and as well still being very specific and direct. John's communication skills could use some work, and it would help us as a team to work better together if he worked on those skills. For example, last quarter when we had the customer meeting, things started to fall apart when John said some things about the team and our internal work that I don't think he should have said. Notice in that mode of feedback that it's still very direct. Overall, the contents are the same, but it's much more kind and specific. It doesn't have direct attacks at John, which could be misconstrued as different kinds of things on different teams. When receiving feedback, also remember that it's just generally uncomfortable for everyone and that you also should receive it with empathy and kindness and take as much of it as you can to grow and as an opportunity to become better. It's challenging. Taking difficult feedback or really any feedback is just kind of weird. It's uncomfortable, but it's one of the best ways you can grow quickly and see areas of your work that you need to improve. The frequency of giving feedback and receiving feedback can be really powerful in growing and getting a good idea of where you're at and just not being surprised overall. Usually I like to ask feedback from my teammates every month or two or so versus the like once a year performance review kind of feedback that most people are used to because that's once a year. And instead, I like to hear feedback more frequently so I can continuously improve. And this also you could apply to pull requests or code reviews where you're getting frequent feedback inside of those so you can more quickly and maybe in bite-sized chunks uh, improve your code and improve your pull requests as things are going. 
let's take a quick look at maybe a bad example where you're not getting frequent feedback enough and things start to fall apart a bit. Hey John, I, I was hoping to give you some quick feedback here. I noticed over the last three years that you've had some frequent spelling mistakes in your pull requests. Here's a long laundry list of the last 150 times that this happened. Now, I know, I know, but I think it would help the team move a little quicker if we didn't have to do some iterations on spelling mistakes. This is a perfect opportunity for some fast feedback and doing it more frequently. This is something that I personally have struggled with. Spelling is just not my foray. So let's look at a example of this where good feedback was used to maybe more frequently work on this. Hey John, I was hoping to give you some quick feedback here. I noticed your last pull request had a number of spelling mistakes. And I'm wondering if maybe there's a linter we could add on GitHub or something, or maybe take a look at your editor settings. That way the, the whole team can just move faster on pull requests without having to do new pushes. That kind of feedback is really fast and frequent and enables an entire team to move faster as well as helps that individual grow quickly. This one I ripped off straight from Pivotal's company values. It's do the right thing. And more often than not, we know what the right thing is, but we just choose not to do it or we give in to our worser nature. I'm talking about back channeling, backstabbing, talking crap about people behind their back. It's just not gonna end well for you and your team. And more often than not, just breaks trust down and creates rifts inside of your team, which then are reflected in your products and your work and the way that people get stuff done. Let's look at an example of this and I hope it's obvious why it's bad. God, did you see John's last pull request? It was so bad, his code. I just, I can't, I can't, I can't review another one of John's pull requests. Oh my God, right? <laughs> Ugh, ouch. What if I overheard that? Or what if that other coworker came back to me and said, hey, Billy Bob over there is saying this and this about you. Maybe we need to have some time with the manager. And then things slow down and then there's rifts inside of the team, Blah. Instead, that person should have just taken that feedback and went directly to John to give that feedback more frequently. I've already talked a little bit about this, but direct and specific feedback are not necessarily in contrast to being kind, doing the right thing, having empathy and giving that frequent feedback. In fact, I would argue they are usually very well married together. Let's take a look at some indirect and sort of blurry feedback, and I hope it's obvious why that's not good. Hey John, I got to look at that last pull request. I, I'm not sure, I think there's chunks of that code that need to be rewritten, and the design just doesn't seem right to me. I think that we should go back to the drawing board and maybe start from square one. Okay, but what needs to change? There's huge areas in there that would need to be redone from that feedback, and it's not specific enough to have direct action and bring something back to the table that would be better or maybe accepted in code review. Let's look at that again, but this time being very direct and very specific. Hey John, I got a chance to look at your last pull request. I, I had three points of feedback for you. One, I noticed that CICD was broken. It looked like a few of the linters and tests weren't passing, so we'll wanna fix that up. Two, I noticed that some of the new functions you added, there weren't mutexes, which we'll wanna add since those functions are called concurrently and we maybe would introduce a race condition. Uh, three, I think that one of the other functions that you introduced, function ABC, it looked like it was actually blocking and we will want to redesign that so that it is concurrent and we can continue to have our program run concurrently. Again, that feedback is more or less the same. Huge swaths of code will need to be rewritten, redesigned, the linters and tests will need to be looked at, but at least this time I have direct and specific feedback to go off of and start doing some iteration and start looking at what I can change to get this re-reviewed and passing code review. I can't tell you how many times I've received good feedback and it's been just an encouragement to know what to keep doing and know what to strengths to push into. Good feedback can be a really, really, really powerful way to grow, not only when giving and receiving it, but it just helps make your job that much more joyful, I would say. Good feedback is often forgotten. Even unsolicited, frequent good feedback, I would say, is great. That is really often missing from high-performing teams. They so often can just get so stuck down on focusing on what needs to be fixed, what needs to be better, but 
giving that good encouragement can be a really powerful way to keep people growing. Let's take a look at an example. Hey John, I wanted to give you a little bit of feedback. That last customer call, I thought you did a really great job answering that customer question on the bug that we introduced in the last release. It's a really, really tricky area, and I thought you covered it really well and presented a great solution for the customer. Well done. Receiving that kind of feedback would really encourage that person to push into their strengths in answering tricky questions and avoiding difficult situations, even with customers involved. Like I said, giving and receiving feedback can just be really uncomfortable. It's just kind of weird to do. But there are some good models to doing it and making it a little easier and a little softer, just in general. One of my favorites is the sandwich method, where you do good feedback, constructive feedback, and then good feedback again. So really, it's sort of good, bad, good. You sandwich that bad in between two goods, and it helps that blow land a little softer. People just generally don't receive constructive feedback well, so this is a great model to use when trying to give that hard constructive feedback. Let's take a look at an example. John, I was really impressed with the last feature you added in the past sprint. That was a big value add for our customers and our stakeholders. I did wanna give you some feedback though on many of the variable names. I'm not sure that single character variables are a very good idea, especially given some of the new people coming onto our team. I'm wondering if that's due for a refactor. But otherwise, I thought the overall functionality and the code flow was, was very good. I'm very impressed with that. That feedback overall was sandwiched between sort of two encouragements, where in the middle, the critique or the sort of constructive feedback was on single character variable names. That is also specific enough to go back and do a refactor probably within that next sprint time. So that last point, using some kind of model, leads me very nicely into this last piece of device. Understand feedback styles. This one is huge. Some people like just won't respond well to certain styles of feedback, both giving and receiving. I know people who just cringe at doing the whole sandwich thing. Instead, they just like to give very direct, very clear feedback and really just not waste a lot of time. And it's very important for you to understand different people's styles of feedback and how they respond to it. Some people just won't respond to certain styles of feedback. And really, you might be doing them a disservice by not understanding their style of feedback. They want to grow. They want to do better. They want to become a better programmer. And adhering and understanding their feedback styles and the way that they give it, again, that's part of the whole empathy thing, can really help you give better feedback and receive better feedback. For this example, I want to take a look at a conversation that I think is worth having with everybody on your team to open the door to what kind of styles of feedback you respond well to. Hey John, I'm wondering what styles of feedback you respond best to. I'm hoping to do more frequent feedback so that we as a team can all grow and become better as we start delivering more and more products. Yeah, sure, that's fair enough. Generally, I like very direct feedback. Cut all the fluff and just give it to me straight. That way I can understand what I need to work on and what I can improve right away. Sounds good. When I give you feedback, I'll be as direct as I possibly can and avoid any fluff that you might not respond well to. I've had some form of that conversation with a lot of people throughout my career, and it's been really, really helpful just to get an idea of what kind of feedback people like and respond well to and how I can better give them feedback to help them grow and help improve our teams and help improve our products in the end. Thank you all for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I'm all over the interwebs. Find me somewhere, Twitter, wherever, and I will catch you next time. Peace, everybody.